UNDP has many, many um, agencies are under increasing pressure to uh, try to experiment with impact evaluation and, and try to really to um, uh, zero in on, on what comes out of, uh, out of our work. Um, we have also then in the independent evaluation office of UNDP decided to um, experiment uh, with, uh, with some of these uh, areas. And there's, I guess, it's a selection bias in that sense, which is a recognized thing in, in impact evaluation is that, uh, that uh, uh, the temptation is to start um, um, evaluating things that way you think that you, you have a measurable impact, actually. So we have uh, uh, taken two major areas. One is um, biodiversity protected areas, and the other one is actually with uh, Joe's group with uh, 3IE to look into um, mine action, because these are areas where we think that you can actually uh, isolate some of the impacts that um, UNDP may have had. <coughs> now, <coughs> um, why protected areas? Um, and. Um, it's funny, actually, I'm sitting here between Rob and Joe and, and these uh, uh, people who are uh, our partners here. GEF um, is a major funder of biodiversity uh, protected areas. And, and, and in the 20 years of uh, GEFs, no, since 1991, how many years is that? I can't count so far. Um, but the GEF has funded actually more than 1,000 um, biodiversity projects in more than 150 countries. And, and these projects have uh, involved more than 2,800 uh, protected areas, protected, so to say, uh, more than 700 million hectares. And, 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 and the G, direct GEF funding has been uh, $2.2 billion in grants and, and about or more than twice that amount has been mobilized in co-financing. So this is, this is pretty significant work. Nobody has done uh, that much in uh, protected areas, a single agency ever before. Now UNDP has, has been since the beginning a uh, a, an implementing agency for GEF and um, uh, UNDP has been the implementing agency for about half of these funds and half of these projects. So it's, there's a justification why we are focusing on this area. So we are doing this jointly with the uh, GEF Evaluation Office, the GEF Independent Evaluation Office. So both of us have become independent uh, formally, very uh, recently, although it didn't change anything, actually, uh, <laughs> except the title. The, and the title is important. We, it didn't, I, I stand to be corrected. It changed many things, but it didn't change the reporting lines be, because we were uh, independent already before. And we have a third part, uh, partner, which is the IUCN, which is the um, uh, world, um, in the International Uni uh, Union for Conservation of Nature, which is uh, one of the biggest NGOs that, um, well, that's maybe a wrong word also, but it's one of the biggest agencies that um, has been working on, on, on biodiversity co uh, conservation for uh, decades. Um, so in this particular impact evaluation, so we have um, um, these questions that we have posed here. You will see from the questions that they, again, are a broader set of questions. They are not exactly the um, um, just um, the traditional impact evaluation questions. So what have been the impacts and contribution of uh, GEF and UNDP support? Um, the intended and unintended results of in, in biodiversity uh, conservation in protected areas. And uh, what have been the contribution um, 
of the support to, to the broader adapt, uh, adapt, adoption of uh, uh, biodiversity management measures. So that's another uh, question. And, and then the third one uh, relates to the approaches and contextual conditions uh, in, in which we ha have been operating. So you, you have three sets of questions. The first one basically relating to actually to the biodiversity conservation, the second one to management uh, um, um, approaches, and the third one to the approaches of, um, of, um, uh, of these projects themselves. So, the main part where I wanted to focus here was uh, what, were the, what are the challenges of doing such an impact evaluation in, in, in a UN context? And, and there are three sets of challenges. Basically, these are challenges that uh, relate to doing evaluations jointly. They are um, challenges that uh, really relate to the um, impact evaluation methods in, 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 um, in, um, uh, in a development context. And, uh, and the third set is really um, that have more to do with the substance of, of um, protected areas and biodiversity conservation. I shouldn't uh, waste much time uh, on the on the on, on the jointness, we most of us uh, we will know what the challenges of uh, of uh, joint evaluations are and and how difficult um, how you know we all talk about how how jointness is a beautiful thing and we should be doing more and more joint evaluations, but we also recognize that uh, jointness uh, adds to our our uh, challenges. Um, Interesting thing is um, maybe in this context uh, to mention is that that uh, um, UNDP and GEF, uh, for example, are uh, you know joined at the hip. Uh, we have have been working together since 1991, and 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 we are implementing uh, projects that GEF funds and all of that stuff. But but still at the same time, um, uh, our objectives are not exactly identical because the UNDP is a development agency whereas the GEF is a environmental agency. So, so you have nuances of seeing, I think, didn't put it, put it up there, but, but basically nuances in seeing what success looks like. Um, so when you start doing a joint evaluation of something like protected areas, you actually have to get the joint agreement with, between the partners of what are you looking for. Um, and UNDP definitely um, does look more um, for the development benefits of these uh, projects and not only the biodiversity project, uh, benefits, although they are, of course, very important. So also in this case, we wanted to agree on, on what success looks like and what are the um, um, theories of change and, and the logic model of, uh, of uh, what we are trying to verify here. Um, then we come to these method issues, and, and Jotsa has already um, um, taken all the fire from my uh, critique here and because she has shown that uh, none of these myths that pertain to impact evaluation actually uh, are required. So uh, the gold standard, um, I can't help to digress that much that, you know, I, I love this mixed meta metaphor that somebody had um, written a, an article about the RCTs as a gold standard with a, a feet of clay. Um, ouch, actually, but, uh, but um, uh, you know, so we are, we are not talking about RCTs here, no, no, not at all. We are not talking about only, only um, 
quantitative methods and experimental and quasi-experimental me uh, methods because they are very difficult to uh, apply to the kinds of, uh, of work that the UN does. And furthermore, one of the, one of the myths, and me uh, myths, I guess, of um, impact evaluation is that we always say that the impact evaluation uh, is easiest uh, applied to discrete interventions at the, at the fairly small project level at the very clear where you have your where your logic model is quite clear and causality can be established quite clearly. Uh, in this particular case, for example, we are looking at a, a set of activities that have been, you know, carried out in more than 150 countries over 25 years. Uh, so it's a different kind of a, um, impact evaluation in that sense also that therefore um, we have been very much um, concerned with uh, with the logic model really so we have been basing this evaluation on on the uneg impact um, evaluation guidance and the uh, theory based impact um, uh, approaches which has led us to a very clear uh, set of challenges which has to do with the, uh, with the fact that um, um, projects are often not uh, designed uh, and, and sets of projects are not designed in, in the way that would allow us to um, uh, conduct uh, impact evaluations in, in that sense. In this particular case, for example, we have a set of um, very large number of projects that we are looking at. Interestingly, very few of these projects have actually set baselines at, at any, any level. All of them are designed uh, to protect biodiversity, and, and, and as we know, so we, most of us would associate biodiversity with species diversity, ecosystem diversity, and so on. But extremely few of these projects have actually uh, established any targets or baselines when it relates to, uh, that relate to uh, specific species or even ecosystem level uh, protection and maybe this has been um, self-protection on behalf of uh, of uh, UNDP and, and GEF is that you know uh, you if you set these targets so you may set yourself up for failure. Mm. So um, that's a very um, uh, basic challenge. A, a second basic challenge is ob obviously that you don't have a... Um, several years ago, GEF started requiring that, uh, that um, all implementing agencies collect um, data on management effectiveness and, and monit monitoring that data. Turns out that in this particular case, um, uh, I don't know, um, thousands of man hours, woman hours, human hours have been spent in collecting this data, but nobody has actually um, collated it or systematically monitored what the data um, said. So now our two good offices have spent $50,000 in retrospectively doing that. In, try, in, in basically uh, call, uh, taking those reports that the, all of the implementing agencies have produced uh, for the past 10 years or whatever, and, 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 and uh, we have said, uh, you know, we have analyzed them. But anyway, so, so that, that was one of these um, uh, challenges that we had. Another interesting challenge is obviously um, the, the um, 
IUCN, our part, partner, has been collecting all kinds of lists of uh, uh, globally significant uh, biodiversity, of red list of species and of, of, of hot spots of, um, of uh, where they exist and so forth. What we have been now trying to do is to collate and to overlap these lists against uh, where GEF and UNDP have been operating in these uh, projects. Very interesting work and, and very, very, uh, actually I, I would think very uh, important and path-breaking in, in many ways. Um, it hasn't been very easy because uh, many of these play, many of the projects don't even have things like geo uh, data. You don't. Uh, we spent a lot of effort and, and, and money in the beginning to to try to figure out where these um, projects actually operate. Um, the other thing is that the GEF actually operates on the basis of eligibility criteria. You can't do a randomized controlled trial uh, in this kind of a um, setting, but you try to bring all the evidence, all the data sources that you have into, into this uh, picture. So we'll be trying to use this, um, the tracking tools, um, which are tracking all of these thousands of projects uh, at the beginning, at midpoint, and at the end, and you try to see what they have done and what has happened. You mix, you, you match that against the global data that you have on, on, on even things like uh, uh, wildlife abundance, uh, species populations uh, that you know about this um, um, in these um, uh, protected areas. And now this is how far we have come thus far. And now we are going to start um, field visits. We have selected 24 protected areas in six countries where, uh, where our team is going to be visiting for the next half a year. And the point there is, um, again, that they will be, the countries have been very purposely selected. So n nothing randomized there, but you know, uh, purposely selected to um, provide different kinds of sets of um, information. Uh, all of them, all of the six countries have both, uh, have protected areas that are both uh, GEF funded and, and not GEF funded. And so you try to uh, look at the different models and, and, and management models and, and so forth. And the field visits are particularly important for looking at the social and economic aspects that have not been included in the tracking tools. Okay, that's it, that's mine, my last uh, slide. And that's basically just, you know, to summarize why, why we are doing it. And, and, and we do hope that this will be a, a contribution to, to the field and, 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 and um, we hope that it will actually also bring some external validity to, uh, to these findings in that sense that we could actually explain something, what, you know, uh, what works, why, under what circumstances, what are the factors, the, what are the causalities and logic models, uh, lo logical flows here that we can build upon in the future. Thank you, I'm sorry I took too much time.